Has Emma learned how to talk yet? She makes many noises, many sounds, but not yet words. Can you say ginger? Ginger? How about lemon tomato juice? Lemo? You're very lucky to have your mother's wedding dress to wear. Yes, well, anyways, it's free. The last time I paid good money for a brand new one, let's just say it's bad luck. <laughs> well, maybe this one will bring you good luck. Well, I'll consider it good luck if you can make it fit me. It's no problem. I will sew two darts in the back and tighten the waist. Oh, can you fix the veil? What is wrong with the veil? The lace is torn. Can you repair it? No. I am seamstress only. The making of lace is a very special skill. La Blanc. Chi sa lavorare il merletto? Il merletto! It's not important. I'll just ask around and see if anybody knows a lace maker. Okay, fine. Got to act, sense, you ate the positive, eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You illustrate Do my last remark. Joe The positive healing Money the negative And last on To the affirmative Don't mess with Mr. In Between No, don't mess with Mr. In Between Good evening, Davis residence. Mr. Davis, this is the pharmacist at Brandstetter's. Your mother is here filling her prescription, and this is the third month in a row she insists I fill only half of it. Th does she say why? She says it's all she needs, but I called the doctor, and he said he hasn't lowered the dosage. I appreciate you calling, and I'll check on it as soon as she gets home. Excuse me, please. Oh, hello, Gina. Hello, Mrs. Davis. Uh, oh, let me see this beautiful... Baby! Can you say Grammy Davis? Say Grammy! 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 <laughs> oh, you're looking at lace supplies. You make lace, honey? No. When I was younger, I crocheted lace for a dime a yard. There's not much call for that these days. You make lace? <laughs> well, my mother taught me. I am altering one wedding gown, and the veil needs repair. Maybe you could repair this lace for my I customer. I'd be happy to look at it. Oh, it's only small repair. Mrs. Davis, your prescription is ready. Do you want me to come and get it, or will you bring it over? I will bring it over. Well, good, then. I'm looking forward to doing it. It will be fun to be working with lace again. It's been a while. Or you can give it to Gloria the next time she babysits. She'll bring it home, and that'll save you a trip. Okay, fine. Good night now. Good night. According to the landlord, mother is late with her rent third month in a row. This is your third notice. Now, the refrigerator, for all intents and purposes, is empty, and it's, there's not but a half a dozen cans in the cupboard. Lord have mercy. And from the looks of it, she's weeks behind in the iron, and she can't take any amount of iron that she used to do. Well, if she needs money, why doesn't she just say so? Don't use that tone. You stand there and tell me you'd ask for money if you needed it. Don't answer it. I, I, I know the answer, and you know the answer. We all know the answer. You wouldn't in a million years. Oh, Mother, come, come on in. Good evening, Mother Day. Good evening, Gloria. I won't stay but a minute. I just want this much milk for my breakfast. I ran out and I didn't get to the market before it closed. Of course. I have to be going. I promised Gina that I would babysit. Oh, 
I ran into her at the drugstore. What a beautiful child she has. <laughs> uh, Gloria, if you can, will you bring back that bail Gina wants repaired? She and I arranged it. Uh, certainly, Mother Davis. Now, come on in. I'll get you that milk. Uh, Mother, the, uh, the drug is called about your prescription. Is that so? Said you didn't feel but half of it. I don't need but half of it. That's not what your doctor said. How would you know that? The drug is called your doctor. Oh, what does that doctor know? He's just in cahoots with that drugstore to make more money on that high-priced medicine. Mother. Abel, do I look healthy to you? Yes, you do. I know I do. And I feel better than I have felt in years. But you can't go on working like you have been, and you can't take in as much irony. Are you going to finish this? Uh, no, you, you take it. I just hate to see it go to waste. It's true. I know I don't take in as much iron as I used to. That's true. But the work I do get is sufficient, thank the Lord. And for your information, while you and that druggist were busy being busybodies, I got myself another job. Don't you worry about me. Doing what? Making lace. What Gloria's picking up. You have to take your medicine like the doctor says. Abel, at my age, I don't have to do anything. Good night, I was beginning to worry about you too. Uh, Emma. Not to worry, I had errand. How's my favorite little girl doing? Huh? Did you learn how to say Charlie yet? Charlie? Charlie. Hey, Emma. Uh, How about Chuck? Uh, I'll let other people call me Chuck if you say it. Uh, Chuck. Charlie? Charlie. I'll be ready in just one moment. I bet you five bucks I get her to say my name before you come out of the bathroom. Uh, uh, I hope I'm not too late. Oh, hi, Gloria. Come on in. Hello, Mr. Haley. Uh, uh, How's my baby? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, oh, I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Mm -hmm. Tina's running behind schedule. Well, then it worked out just fine because I thought I was running late. What a beautiful lace. Gina, this dress is beautiful. The time they took to do this. Nobody makes lace like this anymore. Gina, let's get a move on. We're going to miss the beginning of the movie. Finally. Gina, is, is this the veil that Grandmother Davis is going to work on? Yes. I'll take it to her tonight. You'll take it to her now, please. What? But you two are going... Now? What's this? I'm sorry. I must have canceled the babysitting. I'm not feeling well. Are you sick? What's the matter? No, only I do not feel well. Would you like for me to get you some bicarbonate of no. soda? thank you. Only please take home the veil. Of course I will. I can get to play with this little girl some other day, can I, Emma? Uh, uh, Let me pay you for tonight, Gloria. Oh, no, there's nothing to pay me for. Well, you came all the way over here. Let me give you a bus fare at least. Thank you. I hope you get to feeling better, Gina. Thank you. I'll keep Emma company while you rest. I'm not resting. I have much work to finish. You just said you weren't feeling well. I'm not feeling well because I have work to finish. So you can go now, Charlie. You better go. Me go? Soon it will be time to put Emma to bed. Which I have done more than once. All by my lonesome. It is not propriety for you to stay in my room. But the door's open. Even so. Gina, you're acting squirrely. Good thing I like squirrely dames. But you go now? All right. All right, I can take a hint. Uh, uh. Nighty night, kiddo.
You keep practicing my name. Charlie. Charlie. I'll see you tomorrow, Gina. Yes, okay. with your mother did you talk about her income we talked it is hard for her you know Abel, we've been doing better every week at Rupert's. thank the lord that money we've been saving so we could quit the slums that money could help your mother and to tell you the truth I'm used to working for the Sloans after all these years. <laughs> That's very kind of you. We can start paying part of her rent, uh, all of it, if it comes to that. And she can use her ironing money for medicine. That's a good idea. But then, you know her mother likes to be independent. Oh, we could tell her that we're going to pay her more for work in the cash register at Rupert's. That way, it... It doesn't look like charity. That's that's a good idea. But then she might force herself to come down to the restaurant when she's under the weather. Oh, mm, that's true. She might feel obligated. Truth of the matter is, she, she's not going to take money from us. And she won't let us know if she needs food or medicine. Mm. She is a puzzle. She is. You want that woman to move in here with us. I would never ask you to do that. Well, you're not gonna ask, but that's what you want. I can't burden you with my mother. But? But? Nothing. I have put up with her son all these years. I guess I can put up with her. Let her move in. Oh, uh, sugar. Now, don't you sugar me. <laughs> <laughs> you know they say that the Lord never gives us a burden greater than we can bear. They do say that. Amikdash in a Chi sa lavorare il merletto? Il merletto! Io so lavorare il merletto! Vieni qua! Io so lavorare il merletto! Vieni qua! State in fila! You think I'm too old to take care of myself? I never said that. Too old to keep my apartment clean? No. Too old to cook for myself? Mother. Too old to think straight? Positively not. It's only a matter of us enjoying your company. And? And we can look after you in case there ever is a problem. I appreciate your generosity, son, but when I get old enough, I might take you and your wife up on that very kind offer. I'll let you know when that time comes. The good Lord lets me live that long. Paddy cake, paddy cake, baker. Here, you this. Oh, oh. Mama will be right back. Yes, hello. Ma'am, I'm your neighborhood full of brush men. Hello, Charlie. I'd like to tell you about a special offer, which is a time-honored American custom called splurging. And what is splurging? It means whenever you have a good day, which I have had, which consists of a record amount of orders, which means a fat commission. 
Now the custom is to go out and spend some dough. You spend what you've only just earned? To celebrate. It's bad luck if you don't. And Miss Case says we can drop the baby off with her. Thank you, Charlie, but I think I do not want to go out tonight. That's it? You don't want to go out? Yes, that's it. And Gina, it is also American custom to make up an excuse when you turn a guy down. So as he can save some face. Okay, sorry. Eventually I'm too tired tonight. Eventually we all get tired, but not until we do something that makes us tired. Thank you, Charlie, but we will go splurge another night, okay? I guess. Bye, Charlie. Bye. having second thoughts second thoughts about what about going out with me about getting engaged getting married oh sorry about that old buddy she's sick of the side of me she's tired of hearing from me she's she wants to dump me she told you this to your face no on the phone but not in so many words maybe it's for the best she's stepping out with another guy hell no she doesn't even leave the room i call her morning noon and night she's always there i had a sister-in-law that stayed inside 365 days a year but nobody minded, because when she did go out, she read all the traffic signs aloud. My Uncle Orrin never went out. Of course, he was a drunk, which I'm sure is not your lady's problem. Lord rest his soul, my uncle was never five steps from a bottle of booze. He'd hide one bottle under the mattress, another one in the sofa, another one behind the books. Once, he put one in the light fixture for Pete's sake, which blew up when he left the lights on all night. <laughs> Gina doesn't drink. Well, that's what they used to say about Uncle Warren. He was so good at hiding the hooch. <laughs> say, Charlie, this was your round. Well? She says she's not old enough to move in with us. Maybe it's for the best. Now, why would you say that? When my aunt was getting on in years. Mm. 67, wasn't she? 76. My mother took her in, and the house was never the same. She brought along my uncle's remains in a little box and put it on the coffee table. Wouldn't have it anyplace else. And she brought a player piano with not one roll to go with it. Not a single one. And her cat. I remember that cat. Mean he was. And stupid. So stupid you had to remind him to put one foot in front of the other in order to walk. And didn't he smell up the house? You could smell it a block away. My mother doesn't have a cat, but she'd be welcome in our house even if she did. Well, as I was saying to Gloria, what did you say to me? Well, I told you or someone. I believe you told me. If the daughter-in-law doesn't make the invitation herself, there's no way on God's green earth any self-respecting mother-in-law is going to feel welcome. You ready for your check? Now, don't go blaming the messenger. Not that you necessarily want her to feel welcome because these things don't always work out. Mother Davis, Abe told me you turned down our invitation to move in with us. I am not old enough to be looked after like a child. Nobody thinks of you as a child, Mother Davis. I'm relieved to hear it. We want you... We both want you to live with us because we think that you have worked long and hard enough that maybe now we can do a few things for you. Not that you need anybody to do anything for you. Only that we want to do something for you now and again. You and Abel already do a great deal for me. Well, we want to make your life a little easier and have the pleasure of your company. I wouldn't dream of imposing on you. It's no imposition. Well, Gloria's kind of you to offer. But I like turning on my radio in the middle of the night and seeing what stations I can pick up. And 
eating what I want to eat when I want to eat and coming and going as I choose. And I'm afraid I'd worry about getting in your way. What can I say to persuade you? Not a thing. You say Charlie? Emma. Say Charlie. Charlie. Okay. English lesson's over for today. The first word will probably be in Italian. Well, anyways, at least there's one woman in this room who's glad I came over to visit. Even though I wasn't invited. Even though a certain mommy didn't say, good to see you, Charlie. Glad you came over. Am I right, Emma? I also am glad you came over, okay? Okay. Mm. Say, Gina, I feel like a drink. There's a glass over there you can use. Thanks. What do you have to drink? I think you want the water. It's all I have. No hooch? No booze? What kind of question is that? You know? Oh, no. What happened? Oh, no, I make a mistake. Was it wrong? I make a mistake. The work is ruined. I must do it all again. Jeannie, you're going to scare a certain little someone in the room. Never let scare me. Now, it's just a mistake. Don't jump all over yourself. You know nothing. Well, I know when you're not letting me in on something, and I know when I'm not welcome. Bye-bye, kiddo. You call me when your mama grows up. mother is a very independent, very strong-willed individual used to living by herself and, and, and like as not she'd be unhappy anywhere besides her own place, let alone here. So, so maybe it's for the best. Now, I did all I could to change her mind, but I can't say I'm entirely sorry. She needs her independence. Mother Davis, come in. Thank you, Gloria. Hello, Mother. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I just came to tell you I'm moving in. Wonderful. You are. I've thought about it long and hard. And I decided that if you need someone here to take care of the place while you're at work, why should I refuse? Well, this is... Good news. Great news. <laughs> oh. Welcome. Welcome, Mother Davis. <laughs> I'll just go put on some tea. I've come to realize that you need my rent money. Now, don't let Gloria know that I'm aware of it. I want to save her pride. That's a uh, very kind of you. Where did you serve, young man? Fourth Infantry. I saw Normandy, saw the bulge. So more of Europe than I care to. Well, you probably have seen as much battle fatigue as I've treated. No, I'm not saying my fiance has battle fatigue. I'm saying that she's acting squirrely, like some of my buddies who did. Is she having nightmares? Uh, I don't know. Insomnia? Oh, I... Crying at the drop of a hat? She hasn't talked to me about any insomnia. I haven't seen her cry, except at a funeral once and at the movies. Maybe it's just she won't cry in front of me. I mean, she quit going out with me. She quit going out of the house almost completely. And is she uh, neglecting her work? I don't know. The first thing to remember is that it's personality 
not any given experience that gives a person tendencies towards uh, battle fatigue or similar depressions. I'm supposed to believe that mortars going off close enough to make your eardrums bleed has nothing to do with somebody going around the bend? What I'm telling you is the latest research in the field of psychiatry. Doc, with all due respect, Gina is the most positive thinking, positive thinker I ever met in my life. I asked her once how she can go through what she went through without spending the rest of her life killing Nazis for revenge. You know what she said to me? She said she gets her revenge by being happy. By raising her daughter to be happy. Her head screwed on tighter than anyone I ever met. Son, your fiancé is swinging back and forth between all the good things that have happened to her, having a baby, getting engaged to you, to all the bad things that have happened, losing her husband. Losing her relatives in the war. Losing her relatives? Criminy, Doc. She was in a concentration camp. You make it sound so cut and dried. It's dumb luck she's even alive. The good news is that you can bet your bottom dollar that she will get over it. Most people get over the hard times. That's all you're suggesting? Let your fiancé's doctor give her some sleeping pills. Criminy, that's the latest in research psychology, huh? Sleeping pills? Letter openers. Oh, and this cup. Is this teacup just missing its handle, or is this some new style I haven't seen yet? Eh? I am as frugal as anybody. More frugal than a lot. And I keep everything that I see a use for, but your mother saves things that are completely useless. And the one decent piece of furniture she had, she gave away to your sister. Not all of this is useless. And you got plenty of things yourself on the porch and in our closets. Some things need fixing. That electric washing machine you bought at the rummage sale has needed fixing for years. You are taking her side already, and she hasn't slept one night in this house. I am not. Oh, my word. Look. This is full of mistakes. Oh. Gina's going to have to have this done over. Her eyes must be worse than we thought. Here she comes. Uh, don't worry, Gina, about this until I see if I can find another lace maker. Hi, Mother. You're home. I have almost everything gave out of boxes. And until I get another box, I'll just keep this kitchen drawer. Oh, you found my letter openers. The nicest full of brush man gave these to me. Oh, Gloria, this one is for you and Abel. And this one is for Mailing to Robert. Thank you. Uh, what, what do you want me to drive over to Pastor Harrington? Oh, this. This is 1943, Mother. Oh, it's no good as a calendar anymore. But there's some very nice pictures in there he may want to cut out and put up in the youth activities room. Un un unless one of you wants it. Uh, no, what else goes over? Nothing, unless you have something, Gloria. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll run it by on my way to Gina's. Uh, the, the Sloan's asked me to pick up a toy for the baby. Uh, I'll be back in a jiffy, just help you sort things out. Oh, there's no hurry. Glory and I'll have this under control in no time, won't we, Glory? Yes, indeed. You just rest your legs, Mother Davis, and I will help you sort some of this out. You say, Abe? Abe? Abe, babe, 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 babe. I bet you can, you just don't want to. You. Just wanna make me wait, don't you? <laughs> thank you for bringing over the toy. Tell my parents and I said thank you. The Sloan's asked me to remind you about dinner this week. Yeah. I think maybe I will have to postpone dinner. I am busy. Oh. I'll be disappointed. It's been what? Three weeks. I have been busy. Gina, do you know what a Dutch uncle is? An uncle from the Netherlands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's an expression that means someone who has a lot of advice. 
I don't want to be a Dutch uncle. But you have advice. I don't know if I do. People have been saying you're keeping to yourself a lot lately. I certainly am tempted to do that myself now and again. I know what happened to you. What happened to you? People shouldn't happen to anyone. I know things happen that shouldn't happen. I know I admire you for <laughs> just getting up every day for brushing your teeth. Making breakfast, doing a laundry, but just carrying on after all you've been through. Some mornings I do not even want to make the breakfast. Those are times when it's most important to get up. You don't get up, you admit defeat. People like you don't get up. Things won't get better. I have always thought so this way myself. But always you say that things are getting better, that things will be better. Better, not easier. I never say it gets easier. But what if you're wrong? What if it doesn't get better? Well, it's up to us to guarantee that it will. As far as I can tell us why we're here. I know I don't want Emma to see some of the things that I've seen in my day. I don't want her to go through what you've gone through. Oh, okay. Do I jump? No, or don't Abe does it. You say Abe? Abe. <laughs> you say Abe and jump, Abe. That's Abel's school slate. There's some pieces of chalk down in there with it. You're keeping these itty bitty pieces? That's what he wrote his letters with when he was a boy. This plate is from the St. Louis World Exposition. You never visited St. Louis. No, but a certain gentleman did. And he brought me that back as a souvenir. Everything in this room has a story. Some of them I'm keeping to myself. Mother Davis, we don't have room for all of this. Then you shouldn't have invited me to live with you. But some of these things you haven't used for years, and most of these boxes look like they haven't been opened forever. Do you have a jar that this lid goes on? No, I broke it years ago. But you and I know that as soon as I get rid of it, I'll be needing it. As a matter of fact, I think you have a jar that cap will fit. What are you going to do with these spools, spindles? There must be at least a dozen in here. Twenty-seven altogether, with the ones in that box and the box underneath it. Why on earth? Some of them have even have this old yarn. That's homespun. You know, it never occurred to me until right now that a woman your age probably never felt real homespun. Go on, feel of it. Abe's grandmother made that thread. My mother. All those spindles my mother used. A few of them my grandmother used. I told you that my grandmother was famous for her lace making. She saw that my mother learned early on so that she could stay in the big house and not have to do field work. Granny made sure that not a one of her children had to do field work. House slaves were worth more than field hands. I guess you know that. Yes. They live better, too. Granny saw to it that not a one of her children did field work. Not a one. She was a funny old woman. I 
I used to love to sit on her lap in the evenings. She'd talk about the old times. She'd say, Rebecca, all her teeth are gone. Rebecca, and you might find it hard to believe looking at me now. You think I'm one of your little crab apple dolls. But your granny, when she was younger, was highly thought of. She fetched a good price. I wish I had a piece of her lace work to show you. Sometimes it's it's hard for me to explain to the fellows who haven't seen combat what it was like over there. The things that go through your head the night before, the morning it starts, and the things that you do that you never thought you would do, never thought you could do. How things that never even enter into your head. And then they tell you to go home and they say, get over it, put it behind you. And then if you can't get over it, you section eight material. So we all say we get over it and I don't think anybody ever does get over it. Gene, I'm getting tired of listening to myself talk. I'm getting scared, Gina. Hi, look who it is. Hello, come in. Good evening. Hello. Where is that baby? There she is. Hey, you say Uncle Abel yet? Oh. Can you say my name yet? <laughs> if you say his name before my name, I'll never forgive you. This wedding dress is so beautiful. Uh, Gina, I have bad news about the veil. Uh, Mother Davis, uh, her heart was in the right place, but she's getting on in years, and her eyesight isn't as good as it used to be, so... I'm afraid you're going to have to get someone to take it all out and repair it again. Oh, honey, don't worry. We'll find someone who can fix it in time, and, and, and we'll pay for it. I can fix it. Oh. I thought you said you couldn't. I can make lace. You, you look like you want to take a little walk outside. Oh. Yes, you do. Uncle Abel and Mr. Haley are going to take you around the block. Please, Mr. Haley, get her thanks. This is a good time to take a little walk outside. She'll enjoy going outside. Yes, she will. <coughs> yes, she will, you little pumpkin. Mm. We're going to take Emma for a walk. Look at that. My word. Who taught you? Mama told me. Your mother must have been a wonderful lace maker. And a wonderful teacher, too. Jewish prisoners that had a um, profession. A trade? Um, a skill? A skill, yes. If you have a skill the Nazis need, then you can stay alive. When we get off train at camp, a Nazi officer had Capo ask which one of us has skills. First he asked for musicians, and the woman stepped forward and said she play violin. 
Then he asked for lace maker. My mother says she is lace maker. And she tells me to say I am lace maker too. Before we arrive at the camps, they are making preparation for the special occasion. SS officials to come from Berlin. They are needing fancy things. They tell us to make lace for a tablecloth, for a big dinner. All others on the train were sent to the gas chamber. That was very quick thinking on your mother's part. Also very dangerous, for in that moment I did not know how to make lace. Mama had wanted to teach me before the war, but I refused to learn. I did not want ever to be a lace maker. I wanted to be better than my mother. In the barracks at night, she would show me some things. And in the workroom, she worked faster than all the other workers so that she can give me pieces of lace for my own to show the guards when they come for the inspection. All the other workers, they say, slow down, slow down, because as long as there is work, we will stay alive. We do not want to finish our work. We are afraid to finish our work. Mama started to take lace work back with her to the barracks at night. This was very dangerous because if they catch her, they would kill her. But she wants for me to have extra pieces every day because I'm not learning fast enough. At first, my lace work is not good enough to show to the guards, so each day I show them a piece that Mama has made. Eventually, I am getting better, but one day the guard comes at an unsuspecting time. I do not have time to hide my mistakes. But Mama says that they are hers, so that she would be punished instead of me. Before I can do something, they take her away. I should have speak up. I should have told the truth. If I told the truth, then Mama would be alive today. There's no guarantee she would be. I should have speak up. With those people, she could just as easily be dead, no matter what you did, no matter what you said. I should have speak up. You did what you could, child. And so did your mama. Your mother did what every mother dreams of doing. Your mother saved her child's life. And you know, you know that you would do the same thing for your daughter. You gave your mama a gift by surviving that place. Your life is your gift to your mama. Your life is your thank you to her. Your mama was a great woman. You make her proud. You still awake? How she like my lace work? She said she'd never seen better. Oh, go on. Ah, as sure as I'm standing here, I'm here to tell you that you'd have made Granny Bertha proud. Oh. Am I telling the truth, Dave? That you are, and here's what she owes you. Oh, it wasn't worth two dollars. She thought it was. I thought it was. I'm going to see about doing more lace work and less ironing. Spend less time on my feet that way. You like? Oh, Gina, that's gorgeous. I can never thank you enough. You even fixed the veil. Yes. Found a lace maker? I fixed it. 
But, well, thank you. I'll show you a secret. I stitched something in. I hope you don't mind. See? This is the Hebrew word, chai. It means life. It was the tradition of the woman I learned from. Always to put chai hidden somewhere in her lace work. She never tell anyone it was a secret. Many people who use her lace never knew it was there. I tell you because a good wish should not be kept secret. Mom. Thank you. Mommy, Mama. Mama. She said Mama. Ah!